بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستك الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off last week and that was we stopped here where these uh, points uh, several points are mentioned um, regarding uh, the types of shirk that are related to, um, uh, uh, which are related to offering sacrifices. So last week, if you were here, or if you listened to the audio, the sheikh was talking about the uh, the shirk of uh, isti'ana, seeking aid, and the shirk of seeking nearness by, by way of sacrificing an animal or whatever that might be. So then the sheikh, he continues, and he got up to these points where you can see where the red highlighted text is. So he said that there's a few, there's a, some points or conditions related to, or affairs related to this. So he continues, he says, Al-halul ula an yushrak al-insanu fi dhabihati min al-jihatayn fa yasta'inu fi dhabhiha bi ghayri Allah wa yataqarrabu biha li ghayri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi an yaqula ind dhabhi bismi fulan aw allan. Hada shirkun fi al-isti'ana wa an يقصد بهذا الذبح التقرب لغير الله سبحانه وتعالى وهذا شرك في العبادة والتقرب فيكون شركه من جهتين من جهة الاستعانة ومن جهة التقرب So then the sheikh he, he says that the first condition or the first view with regards to um, shirk here when, when the sacrifice is made then the sheikh he says is that a person, an insan, a person, he commits shirk with regards to the sacrifice that he makes from two perspectives. He says that if he seeks aid with other than Allah during that sacrifice, that's one. And the other one is seeking nearness to other than Allah as well. By by way of that, by saying, for example, when he is doing the uh, dhabah um, or the sacrifice, he says, in the name of uh, Fulan, such and such a person. That's not Allah, of course. S- such and such a person, another person, a name of another person. Then the shaykh says that this is shirk uh, or polytheism in regards to seeking aid with other than Allah. And also at the same time, if the person uh, intends by the sacrifice nearness to other than Allah, whoever that person or thing may be, then that is also the sh- uh, is shirk in worship, and that worship is related to seeking nearness to something, whether that be a dead person, a grave, a jinn, or rock, stone, whatever it might be that people do or fall into. So then the shirk says that the shirk here, then this the shirk is. Of, of from two perspectives when we look at it from two angles from the shirk is from seeking aid as in seeking aid with other than Allah by calling upon other than Allah uh, during the sacrifice and also in terms of intending uh, seeking nearness to something obviously other than Allah but something else seeking nearness so seeking aid and seeking nearness these two so the shaykh is mentioning so then the shaykh he continues to the next paragraph and he says, Al and the second uh, view or condition here, or affair, he says, An yakuna shirku min jihati taqarrubi, wala yakunu min jihati listianati. Mithlu an yati al insan bil the bihati, wa yakulu in the dabhiha, bismillah. Walakinahu fi kalbi, kasada, an yitakaraba bihal lil kabri, o lil jinni, o lil sanami, o lil shajri, o lil gayri dalik. فهذا شرك من جهة العبادة وليس شركا من جهة الاستعانة لأنه عند الضبح استعانة استعانة بالله وذكر وذكر اسم الله سبحانه وتعالى ولكنه 
في قلبه قصد بها غير الله فهذا شرك ناقل من ملة الإسلام وهو شرك من جهة العبادة So then the Sheikh says from the second condition or the second type, second way uh, or view here is when uh, somebody for example he's got this sacrificial animal he's making a sacrifice and he commits uh, uh, the shirk takes place with regards to seeking nearness and not from the viewpoint of uh, seeking aid he says like a person he comes with the sacrificial animal and he says bismillah so he, he sought aid with allah by saying in the name of allah but uh, uh, bismillah however in his heart he intends uh, nearness by way of this uh, sacrifice to a grave or a jinn or a statue or a idol or a tree or other than that from the things that people sacrifice uh, an animal or carry out this act of worship to or for So the Sheikh says that the shirk here, this polytheism, it's from the perspective of worship. And it isn't the shirk which is from seeking aid. Right? It's not from aid because the person said Bismillah, but in his heart he intended to seek nearness to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sheikh mentions that in this situation here. And so he says that what's the result of this then? The result of this is that this person Whoever does this uh, leaves the fold of Islam by way of this action and all his deeds are nullified and he leaves the fold of Islam and becomes a believer by way of this action. Then the Sheikh moves on to the third condition. He says, Al-Hal Thalitha, or from the possibilities. He says, Wahiya Nadratun Wuku'an. So this third one, it's it's very rare. It's uh, It happens uh, uh, rarely. He says, وَهِيَ نَادِرَةٌ وَقُوءًا أَنْ يَكُونَ شِرْكُ مِنْ جِهَةِ الْإِسْتِعَانَةِ وَلَا يَكُونُ مِنْ جِهَةِ التَّقَرُّبِ يَعْنِي يَقْسِدُ بِذَبْحِهَا التَّقَرُّبِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَابْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِهِ سُبْحَانَهِ وَلَكِنَّهُ عِنْدَ ذَبْحِهِ لَهَا يَذْكُرُ عَلَيْهَا غَيْرَ اسْمَ اللَّهِ بِاسْمِ فُلَانْ أَوْ عَلَانْ وَلَكِنَّهُ مِنْ نَاحِيَةِ So then the Sheikh, he says, this one that is not so often done by people, but it's still done, but it's not as, it's rare. It's more rarer than the other types that he mentioned. He says that this type of shirk is, for example, where the person, he seeks uh, aid, but he doesn't seek nearness to other than Allah. He seeks aid, but he doesn't seek nearness. What, what does that mean? The Sheikh, he says, meaning that, He intends by uh, putting forth the sacrifice nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he actually, in his heart, he wants, he's doing it to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, but, you know, seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by this action. However, when he, com uh, when he sacrifices this animal, then he, he utters other than the name of Allah. So instead of saying Bismillah, he'll say the, uh, the name of somebody, whoever that may be. So the Sheikh says that from the perspective or the viewpoint of seeking nearness, then he intends by that seeking nearness to Allah. However, uh, he has obviously sought aid from other than Allah by not saying Bismillah at that point of sacrifice, but saying the name of someone else. So the Sheikh, he continues, he explains what the outcome of this is. He says, فَهَذِهِ ثَلَاثَةُ أَحْوَالٍ كلها شرك في باب الذبح والواجب أن يخلص العبد ذبحه لله سبحانه وتعالى استعانة وتقربا استعانة فلا يذكر على على ذب ذبحته غير اسم الله عز وجل وتقربا لا يتقرب بذبيحته إلا لله سبحانه وتعالى. So then the Sheikh says um, that these are the three types. All of them are shirk. All of them result in Shirk, major shirk, yeah. And the shirk, he says here that, and it is obligatory upon us that we sincerely, you know, that the 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 servant of Allah, he he is sincere, and that he does this action, this worship, the worship for Allah alone, one hundred percent, and not sharing any of that worship with other than Allah, and that he seeks aid with Allah only, 
and not seek aid with anyone else. So he doesn't uh, uh, mention the name uh, uh, of other than Allah Azawajal, when he's carrying out the act of worship. In this example here, uh, to do with sacrificing an animal. And the Shaykh goes on to say, and he doesn't intend uh, nearness except this intention of nearness is to, is, to, is to Allah. Seeking nearness to Allah through this act of worship and not seeking nearness to anything or anybody else. So what the Shaykh has said here. Then he continues, he says, ثُمَّ إِذَا ذَبَحَ الْإِنسَانُ الذَّبِيحَةَ لِلَّحْمٍ للحم لِيَأْكُلَ لَحْمَهَا أَوْ لِيُقَدِّمَ لَحْمَهَا لِأَضْيَافِهِ يُقَالُ ذبح ذَبَحَ ذَبِيحَةً لِأَضْيَافِهِ أَوْ ذَبَحَ ذَبِيحَةً لِأَوْلَادِهِ هذا النوع من ذبحي ليس من باب التقرب وإنما هو ذبح لأجل أجل اللحم إنما يقال ذبح لأولاده أو ذبح ليأكل أو ليطعم ولده يقول القائل ذبحت ذبيحة لي ولأولادي لنأكلها هذا ليس للتقرب وإنما للأكل وأيضا قوله ذبحت لأضياف ذبيحة ناقة ناقة أو شاة أو دجاجة هذا ليس للتقرب هذا للأكل وهذا مباح so I'll just stop there for a second before I move on to another point. So then the Shaykh, he says, then a person may, you know, sacrifice um, an animal or kill the animal for its meat. For example, he intends by the meat to eat. So in this situation, the Shaykh says, like, you know, he's, he's killed the animal to eat its meat or to put forth this meat. To, to his guests, for example, he may have guests, so he's obviously killed, sacrificed, uh, killed a, um, uh, an animal uh, to uh, put forth a, a meal or to serve his guests that may be visiting him. He, the Sheikh says it is said that he uh, sacrificed or killed a, 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 an anim, animal for his guests, or he did it for his children that to feed them. The Sheikh says this type of dhabh or sacrifice, or the killing the animal, it is not from the subject or from the topic of seeking nearness. It doesn't encompass seeking nearness to anything. And uh, rather, the Sheikh says, it is uh, it is done, the sacrifice or um, uh, the killing of the animal, it's done for the purpose of its meat to eat, for example. So, you know, to feed children or to feed the guests, and the purpose is just to eat and to feed children and to feed family for example for example where the person says I, you know I kill this animal I sacrifice this animal for me and for my children so we can eat from the meat or I've done this for uh, so I can feed my guests that are visiting me for example whether it be a camel or a sheep or a chicken or you know the likes of those examples the sheikh says this is not seeking nearness uh, and he says this is for the purpose of eating only, eating, to eat, you know, seeking nutrition and eating. And the Shaykh says this is mubah, that this is permissible. And mubah, if somebody does it like this, then neither does he uh, get the reward. If it was exactly just like that, he doesn't get a reward for it, nor is he punished by it, because it's mubah, it's permissible. So the Shaykh says, وَإِذَا صَحِبَ ذَلِكَ نِيَّةً صَالِحًا يَكُونُ مَأْجُورًا عَلَى ذَلِكَ إِذَا صَحِبَهُ نِيَّةً صَالِحَةً أَنْ يَتَقَوَّ بِهَذَا الْأَكَلْ عَلَى طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ Now, if it, uh, it's mubah, on, on that premise it's mubah, so neither do you get a reward or you get a, a sin. However, if the person was on that premise, well, just what the Sheikh mentioned, but then also intends by it, uh, for example, um, uh, to... Uh, you know, to eat from that meat so he can strengthen himself so he can obey Allah better and he can obey the commands of Allah uh, uh, etc. for these reasons you know, for worshipping Allah to help him to, you know uh, carry out his duties as obligated to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then, then he gets a reward for it because of that intention is rewarded uh, so the shaykh continues uh, he says, Oh, and you see Allah, wa yaksib, wa yaksib a thawabim fi ikram idlaif, wal insan, wa wal ihsan ilayhim yujur. 
يدخل في باب الثواب والأجر وإلا هذا العمل مباح مباح أن يذبح الإنسان الذبيحة ليأكل أو لي لي ليطعم ولده أو ليطعم ضيفه وليس هذا من باب التقرب. The Sheikh continues to give some more examples where if the person intended to get the rewards and to be you know do a goodly action by feeding his um, uh, visitors or guests and you know, doing good actions, which as mentioned previously as well in I don't know if it was in this book. Uh, uh, may be mentioned in the early lessons or the previous book uh, about the meaning of worship and the all-encompassing term about worship, the inward and outward actions uh, that Allah is pleased with, uh, whether it's uh, inwardly or whether it's on your tongue or, or acted out by your uh, limbs. And that which pleases Allah, then that's an act of worship. So if, if it's the intention that, then you get a reward for it. Otherwise, uh, based on the original premise of what, the, what we're discussing now, what the Sheikh discussed, then it's just permissible, it's mubah, and there's no reward or there's no sin for it. So the Shaykh mentioned. So the Shaykh continues, he says, وَلِهَذَا تَلْبِيسُ الْمُذِلِّينَ أَرْبَابُ الْبَاطِلِ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ وَخَلْتُ الْأُمُورِ وَجَأْلُ هَذَا الْبَابِ الْمُبَاحِ مِثْلُ الْبَابَ الَّذِي هُمْ عَلَيْهِ بَابِ الشِّرْكِ هَذَا مِنْ أَسْوَأْ مَا يَكُونُ فِي التَّلْبِيسِ وَتَشْكِيكِ لِلنَّاسِ فِي أقاعدهم فهذا الضبح ليس تقرب عندما يذبح الإنسان لولده أو يذبح لأضيافه ليس للتقرب ولو خرج عن هذا النطاق إلى نطاق التقرب دخل في باب الشرك مثل لو جاء إلى الإنسان شخص معظم عنده أو معظم عند الجميع له مكانة لمكانته ومنزلته عظيم من العظماء كبير من الكبراء رئيس من رؤساء جاء عنده وحيئ ذبيحة إلى أن أقبل عليه الضيف فأراق, فأراق الدم أمامه يريق, يريق دمه دمها أمامه مظهرا تعذيمه وإراقة هذا الضم لأجله هذا دخل في باب التقرب إذا قصد التعظيم والتقرب لهذا العظيم دخل في باب التقرب ولا تحل ولا تحل هذه الضبيحة ولا يجوز أكلها أكلها لأنها قصد بها التقرب لغير الله. So then the Sheikh explains further here and it's important to pay attention to this particular paragraph. The Sheikh he says this is why um, the uh, the misguiders, the ones who misguide the people from the straight path, you know, and the heads of falsehood in this topic that we're discussing right now, he says they've mixed the affairs. They've made it so that it's become doubtful to, to some of the people, become doubtful in this affair of what is permissible, as the Sheikh explained in the previous paragraph uh, uh, from that translation. Uh, of uh, sacrificing an animal just you know for example for the meat for example so i can feed my family or i can feed my um uh, children uh, etc or serve my guests that obviously is permissible is mubah the sheikh he goes on to say that they use this and put doubts in the people's hearts and make the affair wishy-washy so to speak up until the point that the people end up uh falling into shirk because of something that's permissible, they fall into shirk by by, by this uh, doubtfulness and uh, wishy-washy and playing around uh, with the deen. So the Sheikh says, this is from one of the evilest things that can happen to the people, especially in terms of their belief, their aqidah. So the Sheikh, he says that this sacrifice, for example, the animal that's being sacrificed, obviously it's not for seeking nearness because it's mubah, it's just for the meat to eat. And the Sheikh says, when the when this uh, when the person sacrifices the animal, let's say for his kids, so we can eat, so they can eat the meat. For example, he can eat the meat and feed his family, or serve his guests for the, for the meat, etc., and feed. Then, clearly, as explained earlier, this is not uh, seeking nearness, and it's an affair that's permissible, as explained by the Sheikh earlier. And now the Sheikh says, if the person goes out of this circle that this explanation and this condition and this affair that was explained earlier 
and he ends up falling into the category of seeking nearness whatever that because the affair was initially permissible but now he's seeking nearness so now we're going into the other categories that the sheikh was explaining earlier in the uh, during the start of the lesson then this person ends up falling into shirk by way of something that was permissible gets transformed because of the action becomes shirk and the sheikh gives an example of this he'll give us an example here he says like like if a person came to you know a, a person and this this person who has come to the other person he is seen as somebody great he has great stature you know and position and status and he has that and the people hold him to the great esteem, uh, esteem for example stature and status and a position and he has a position and a place with the people yeah uh, from uh, from those people and he's like he's from like the the heads of those people you know somebody of status and power for example then the people or the person he prepares uh, uh, an animal the sacrifice whatever is you know the animal for uh, to eat and by way of that he he obviously sacrifices he spills the blood of the animal obviously sacrifices the animal in front of this great person he, you know he's you know openly doing it in front of this person you know he's spilling the blood openly in front of this person of that sacrificial animal whatever it is for him the sheikh says that this enters in the uh in the in the affair of seeking nearness now this has entered from something that was permissible now because of this you know doing it openly you know doing it for this person because he's of great stature and you're you know clearly apparently doing it in front of the person and you know now you've entered the affair of seeking nearness and so if the person intended uh this uh, by seeking nearness to this great person of stature you know this person of stature and status and place um then this person has uh, entered into the affair of seeking nearness and that meat that is sacrificed or you know you know as you know the blood the blood the, the, uh, the blood has been spilled and you know that meat has been cooked for example or whatever it is it's it's no longer permissible it's haram and it's not allowed for you to or that person or anybody to eat the meat of that because because by way of it uh, the intention was to seek nearness to other than Allah i e to seek nearness to this great and magnificent person who holds great status and position and power for example so the sheikh goes on he goes on to say he says ama dhabha al insan al mu'tad li ya'kul al laham aw li li yu'kila waladahu aw li yut'ima dhaifahu fa hadha amr mubah wa idha ahsan al insan fi hadha al bab an niya mithl أن يتقوى بأكله على طاعة الله وإبادة وإبادته أو أيضا نوى نية صالحة ليتصدق جزء أو بجزء منه للمساكين طلبا لأجر الله وثوابه أو أن يكرم ضيفه تقرب إلى الله عز وجل بهذا الإكرام للضيف هذا يدخل في باب Uh, so then the Sheikh wraps up again just to remind us of what is allowed. He says, as for the person who has sacrificed and killed an animal uh, for the sake of just eating from the meat only for the meat of it, so he could feed his children, feed himself, feed his family, uh, or feed a, a guest, then in this situation like that, it's permissible. If he then uh, does good by way of that, by for example, uh, has it has an intention. Uh, for example, to eat from the meat so he can uh, obey and worship Allah in a more better way by strengthening his body so he can uh, perform more acts of worship, for example, uh, then, and he's rewarded for that. Then now it's rewarded. Also, if he, for example, has a righteous uh, uh, intention uh, to uh, give this meat a sadaqah so he can feed some of the masakeen uh, from it, Uh, the poor people from it uh, requesting by that seeking by that Allah's reward and uh, reward then th that's for him a reward for him or, or the sheikh says for example honoring his guest and by he tends by honoring his guest by, by in this example uh, by seeking nearness to Allah then also he is rewarded 
uh, for the, as the Sheikh has mentioned here, and the Sheikh says that this enters uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know the topic or subject of um, 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 reward, seeking reward. The intention goes back to seeking the reward. Yeah, and so something that was uh, initially uh, just permissible to do, neither is a haram. Yeah, or uh, neither will you be punished uh, um, for it uh, or sinful for it. And neither will you seek a good reward by way of your intention in this affair. As the Sheikh gave some of the examples, you can actually gain a reward from something that's mubah. All goes down to your intention. So the Sheikh continues. He says, Shahidu anna al-musannifa anna al-musannifa rahimahullah mathala مثل بهذا المثال بالذبح واقتصر عليه واقتصاره عليه رحمه الله تعالى قصد ذلك لأن هذا النوع من التقرب يحصل كثيرا وخاصة ونبه على ذلك وأكد عندما يبتلى بعض الناس بمصيبة من المصائب أو بنازلة من النوازل شخص مثلا تأخر الإنجاب عنده وآخر أصيب بمرض طالت مدته معه أو نزلت به نازلة أو جائحة فإذا وقع في شدة ألمها ومصابة بيد أحد المذلين أو أوقعوه أو أوقعوه في مثل هذا الأعمال وكثيرا ما يقع الأوام والجهال في التقرب للأسنام والجن والقبور وغير ذلك من هذا الجهة يذهب إلى أحد أئمة الضلال ودعاة الباطل ويقول له So let's just stop there for a second and then we'll complete the second half of the uh, paragraph Then the Sheikh says the point the point he's making here the point that the original author of this book Sheikh Al-Islam Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab Rahmullah is making here is, is for the example with regards to uh, uh, he brought the example of sacrificing an animal and he just focused on that obviously there's many examples but he focused on this uh, Rahimullah and he m- intended by focusing on that because he says that uh, this is a type of seeking nearness and many people do this and it happens a lot and he says specifically he, uh, we were, uh, our attention was uh, pointed to towards those, uh, for example, the people he kind of uh, makes a point here with regards to um, uh, the, you know, many people are tried and tested uh, by, you know, by things. For example, in this situation, he says, for example, a calamity befalls upon a person. Something bad happens to a person. Yeah, a calamity befalls him. Uh, from, from many examples, the Sheikh brings some examples. He says, for example, some people, you know, uh, you know, in terms of their family, uh, when they get married or whatever, uh, birth is delayed. They don't have a child. It may be many years before they have a child. And some, you know, uh, by the Qadr of Allah, don't have a child. Because of this example, or say another person, he has, uh, uh, his calamity is, uh, uh, you know, a chronic disease. You know, a, a disease that stays with him for a long time. Or other than that, from uh, other calamities where his, uh, uh, for example, his earning ability might be stopped, you know, or his uh, wealth is harmed by a calamity that occurs. So the Sheikh says that if a person falls into a calamity of these kinds and others, uh, and he's in a, a really tough spot, right, and he's obviously afflicted by this uh, calamity, then he'll, you know, at the hands of the misguiders, those people who misguide the others, they, they they will make him do the likes of uh, the following actions or following actions that the Sheikh explains, and he says that this happens a lot. That a lot of the awam, the general folk, the 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 general population, and the uh, and the ones who are ignorant, they fall into this uh, type of seeking nearness, uh, seeking nearness to uh, idols, statues, jinn, uh, graves, and all kinds of things. And the Sheikh he says. You know, they'll go to a person uh, uh, who's one of the uh, uh, imams or scholars of misguidance, the ones who misguide the people, right, and call themselves scholars or they're seen as scholars, but they're misguiding the people or the or the callers to falsehood. 
and they'll say to him, so this is where we stop, the Sheikh says, they say to him, so he says, أَنَا مُنْذُ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ أَشْرَ سَنَوَاتْ مَا أَنْجَبَتْ وَلَا جَاءَنِي الْأَوْلَادِ يَقُولُ لَوْ أَبَدًا عِنْدِي حَلَّا سَرِيءٌ جِدًّا وَمُجَرَّبٌ وَكَثِيرٌ فَعَلُوا هَذَا وَجَرَّبُوهُ مُبَاشْرَةً جَاءَهُمُ الْوَلَدِ أَنْتَ مَا تَعْرِفْ مَكَانَةَ قَبْرِ فُلَانٍ وَمَنْزِلَتِهِ قَبْرُهُ تِرْيَاقَ الْمُجَرَّبِينَ وَكَذَا وَكَذَا خُذْ ذَبِيحَةً وَاذْبَحْهَا عِنْدَ قَبْرِ وَسَتَرَى عِنْدَ قَبْرِهِ وَسَتَرَى النَّتِيجَةَ أمام ال أمام الجهل والقلة البصيرة وقلة الدراية وقلة المعرفة بمكانة التوحيد يدخل الأوام في هذا الشرك زرافات ووحدانة وخاصة عندما يقع استدراج في هذا الباب أن يحصل بتقدير بتقدير الله سبحانه وتعالى حصول ولد لأحدهم أو شفاء أو شفاء مريض من مرضاهم يحصل ذلك ويقدر الله عز وجل حصول ذلك فيستدرج هؤلاء بهذا الأمر ويقعون في الشرك يقولون فلان يذكرون حالة من الأحوال وينسون مئات الأحوال فيقعون والعياذ بالله في الشرك بالله عز وجل وأدوات الباطل يستغل حاجة الناس وعوزهم وفقرهم ونحو ذلك لإيقائهم وإدخالهم لإيقائهم وإدخالهم في الشرك بالله سبحانه وتعالى ولهذا قال نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أخوف ما أخاف على أمتي الأئمة المذلين. So in this final part of this paragraph and final again uh, towards the end of the lesson now the Sheikh he says for example somebody will go to these uh, misguided scholars and these callers to falsehood say to them uh, the person will say to them uh, uh, you know uh, me since many years since like 10 years for example you know, I haven't given birth I talking to his, about his, uh, say a man goes or a woman goes I haven't given birth we don't have any children for example N nothing of children come to us it will be said to him this uh, person of falsehood will say to him never this is never with me, ever. This never happens with me. Meaning that he knows uh, the solution to this problem. And he says to him that this solution has been tried by many and they've done what I've said for them to do and they have given birth immediately. And then it will be said to him, you don't know the the status of the grave of such and such a person and his stature and his position so he'll say to him that his grave is an it's an antidote it's like an antidote for the people who try this and this and that meaning by that that uh, uh, he'll say he explains that person this call of falsehood he says go take an animal make and sacrifice that animal beside beside the grave of that person and you will see the results and the sheikh says in front of the people who are you know in front of the you know you know in front of the you know for the people who are ignorant or don't have much insight in terms of knowledge uh, and they don't have any awareness with regards to these affairs when it comes to a tawhid and the importance of the tawhid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then many of the general public a lot of them they fall into this shirk and into all these kinds of destructive acts for them by by way of this coming shirk and leaving the fold of Islam and committing the the greatest crime or sin that you can commit against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a lot of people fall into this. This is what the Sheikh is saying here in this paragraph. He says a lot of people fall into this affair, uh, whether it's to do with, you know, seeking some kind of uh, result, uh, whether it be to do with uh, children or you know birth of children or whether it be uh, you know um, getting rid of a, a disease or a cure looking for a cure and the likes of these kinds of things and the people misguide them by way of this and make them fall into major shirk by way of this uh, and make them seek nearness to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as explained by the sheikh earlier at the start of the lesson and by way of this they end up falling into major shirk 
and committing kufr, major kufr, and leaving the fold of Al Islam and all of their good deeds, wherever they had, uh, you know, worked hard for, just gets wiped off. Uh, and it's the Sheikh says that that's what in these affairs, uh, the importance of Tawheed, we need to know it. Uh, it helps us stay away from these kinds of affairs that all love evil people call to and cause people to fall into the major shirk. And he also mentions here towards the last couple of lines of this paragraph, he says that these um, these uh, callers to evil and falsehood, they take advantage, they profit and take advantage from the needs of the people. Like these needs, some of the examples that the shirk mentioned um, uh, here, they take advantage of this. Uh, and you know, because of their poverty or their needs, they take advantage of them, and by way of that, they 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 make them fall into shirk al akbar, the greater shirk. And the sheikh says, and he quotes the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, "This is why the Prophet uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that indeed the great uh, one of the uh, uh, I am most fearful uh, of the uh, for, I'm the most fearful of my ummah from." The uh, uh, from the so-called misguided scholars or the call, uh, callers to falsehood, Ayatul Mudillin. Why? Because they, they, you, when you see them, you think, oh, this person's a person of knowledge. You know, uh, you know, uh, looks religious. You know, always talking about religion, this and the other. But to the untrained eye, or the uh, person who is ignorant or doesn't have the basic foundations of uh, Islamic knowledge, like Tawheed and Shirk, and knowing these. Uh, uh, these uh, vital uh, uh, pieces of knowledge and the foundations of Adin, then they, you know they succumb to the actions of these people and they end up coming shirk, as the Sheikh explained. And to the un, un uh, to the person who's not aware of these affairs, you know they think that they're doing good. They don't realize that they're actually committing shirk and falling into. It. And as mentioned previously, and that Sheikh mentioned, that is obligatory upon the Muslims to know the minimum that they need to know to live their life as a Muslim and. From those greatest things that we need to know is the different, the real, the true meaning of Tawheed and the opposite of that, a shirk, and what all of these, the Tawheed and shirk, constitute so we can avoid the pitfalls that are in the path, in our paths, in our lives. So the Sheikh finishes off with the hadith there, and then he says, Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala abdihi wa rasulihi, nabiyyuna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. So inshallah, we'll uh, stop there. And we'll continue next week. We'll stop here with where the Sheikh has stopped because lesson four in the book starts uh, here at this point where we've stopped. So inshallah, we'll continue as well. We'll follow suit and continue lesson four from the book next week. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilant wa astagfiruka wa tubi alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.